What's going on everyone? My name is Derek. Welcome to my channel Euro Superbike Life or ESBK Life for short. A few videos ago I mentioned that we were going to be doing fork seals on my 2010 MV Agusta F4 1000 track bike. Well today is the day. Welcome back guys. So we are going to jump right into this project. As you can see, we're over here on top of my tool chest and here are the majority of things that you're going to need to do this job. Now I've already gone ahead and removed the forks and stuff and you'll see that in a minute, but I just wanted to highlight some of the tools that we're going to need. Now, um, while this job isn't overly difficult without the correct tools, it can be an overbearing challenge. Um, but the nice thing is, is if you can do it yourself, you can save yourself a couple of hundred bucks. So a fork seal replacement uh, at your local dealer, independent uh, tech, will charge you anywhere from 200 to about $450 for both forks, and depending whether they're on the, on the bike or you're just bringing them the forks. Um, you can save yourself, you know, 400 bucks or more, 425 bucks or more, if you do it yourself. And the only thing it costs you is a couple hours in the garage and a few beers and a few bucks. But let's go through what you're going to need here. So you're going to need your fork seal kit. So this is a, a SKF kit that I got from my uh, dealer, uh, Rapato Veloce, otherwise known as Phoenix MV Augusta in Chandler. Uh, they comes in a set. So it has a fork seal and a dust cover in each kit. So you need two of these. and. Um, when it comes to Italian manufacturers, once you add the names like Ducati, MV Agusta, Aprilia to any part, the price doubles. It's sort of like weddings. You know, if you want to have a wedding reception, it's like $10,000. If you just want to have a, a reception hall, it's a couple hundred bucks for the night. Well, these things are the same way. These, this fork seal kit, I think it was about $36 per side, so about $70, a little bit over $70 total. Uh, if it wasn't for an MV, if there was just a general dirt bike or whatever, you can probably get both sides for 20 bucks. But here we go uh, from the dealer, about 35 bucks, 36 bucks per, per set. You are going to need um, a 30 millimeter socket and ratchet. Uh, I have a half inch drive on this one. You're going to need a 19 mil socket and ratchet. Uh, you are going to need a 7mm Allen socket and a ratchet. You can have all the same ratchet. Uh, you're going to need a 19mm crescent wrench, a couple of different flat heads. You are going to need your fork seal driver. Now again, this is one of those tools that if you don't have it, this job is incredibly difficult. But you'll need a fork seal driver. For this particular bike, uh, you need a 50mm one in this unit. Uh, works from uh, anyway it works from 49 to 50 millimeters I have a couple of other ones over here uh, this one works this is a motion pro this is a 48 millimeter and another one here similar works this is a 43 millimeter so depending on on what you're working on you want to make sure you have the correct size fork seal driver um, you're going to need your fork oil of choice I'm using 10 weight Bell Ray you're going to need some brake cleaner you're going to need a ratio right or some type of translucent container to pour the waste oil into and you can measure how much comes out. Uh, you're going to need a marker to mark on your ratio right. You are going to need a bullet uh, and well I take that back. You, if you have a bullet you're doing well. This is one of those tools that makes life easier. If not you'll need some duct tape and I'll show you what you're what's that's for. Uh, we already talked about the marker. You'll need a fork spring compressor. Um, of some sort or a really strong buddy, possibly a buddy anyway, we'll talk about that. And then you'll need some type of uh, measuring device for the fluid. Um, this one is actually a, a syringe and it has some graded numbers on here. So depending on how much is supposed to be in there, you can just pour the fluid in, sit this on top of the fork and then sort of pull it out. And then once it stops pulling out fluid, you know that you're at the right level. You're gonna need some shop towels. You are going to need uh, some type of waste bucket for your waste oil like you have for your car and you're going to need a front stand yeah we'll talk about that in a minute so that's about it um, again these are all the things that you're going to need to do a fork seal and dust cover replacement on a 2010 to 2019 MV Augusta F4 1000 with Marzaki forks. If you have Olin's, the process is a little bit different, but these are, uh, this is a process for Mazaki. So um, let's turn to the bike and we'll get going on replacing these fork seals. <laughs> 
I didn't have a proper front stand to lift the front of the bike. So I have a paddock side stand, um, but I don't have the correct pins. Uh, obviously, I have my KNL uh, lift table and jack, but this bike has titanium headers on it, and normally the jack goes under the headers to lift the front wheel off the ground so that you can remove the front wheels and the fork. Uh, if we do that, we could crack the headers because titanium, while it's super light, it's also super thin. Uh, and that would be about a thousand dollar mistake. So we're not going to use the jack on the titanium headers. Um, so that left this because I don't have a, a front stand that uh, has a pin that lifts from the bottom of the triple tree. Um, and I didn't have time to run out and get one. I guess I could have. The, the pit bull ones are about 300 bucks or something like that. But... I didn't, and I didn't want to wait on this job. So I went old school with a ladder and a strap, and the strap is wrapped around the frame. This allows me to raise the front of the bike off the ground. It's also on a single-sided pit bull uh, stand in the rear to help stabilize the back. But the strap goes up and over the top of the ladder. Under the frame, I ratchet the front uh, end up, and I can get the front wheel and the forks off. So that's why you see <laughs> what we're doing here. Sometimes we have to improvise if we don't have all the proper tools and stands that we need. And that's what I'm doing here. I got a nice sturdy ladder that's lifting and holding the front of the bike. Now, as you can see, uh, the forks and everything are already off the bike. Um, the clip-ons and the wheels and tires and so forth, all of that's out of the way. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Um, there's not a whole lot to know here. Um, you remove the front wheel and you remove everything attached to the forks and then you simply slide the forks out once you uh, loosen them from the top and the bottom of the triple tree. Now, there are a couple of nuances you want to do before you remove those. Before you remove the forks from the bike, you want to loosen this fork cap. Why? Because it's really hard to do because you need something to hold this in place so that you can unscrew this. And most of the time your vice will mar these. So uh, loosen, you don't have to take it all the way out, but loosen the cap. Um, before you take the forks out of the leg. In addition, you want to take out all the preload and the rebound. So these Marzaki forks on the, uh, the MV, they have uh, rebound in one fork and compression in the other. And then obviously the, um, uh, the preload adjusters right here on top. On some forks, you may have rebound and compression on both. Sometimes they're both on top. Sometimes just compression is on top and rebound is on the bottom. Um, either way, make sure you take all of the rebound and compression out. Make sure you're counting clicks or rotation so you can put it back to the exact same place uh, when you go to reinstall these. But loosen this cap, take out all the rebound and compression, and then slide the forks out the bottom after you remove the wheels and loosen the top triple tree, the lower triple tree, and uh, the clip-ons. So now we can get to the process of actually changing the fork seals, and we'll do that over on my bench. Okay, so we're back over on my bench, and this is the right fork leg. Um, it is the rebound leg. You can see the R right there. And it's the fork that was giving me problems. As you can see, it was leaking. We got some crud all at the bottom there. And I've actually already drained most of the oil out of this guy. But the other one is in, the other one was fine, but you know, if you're going to replace one, you might as well replace them both. So we've already loosened up the top cap here. So what we want to do now is we want to finish loosening that up and grab our 30 mil ratchet. Now this next part is where um, you may need some assistance. So here's a top cap here. So we need to take the cap off so we can get the rod out. Technically, I can just remove the bolt and the, the whole thing will come out. But we need to take this out so that we can properly measure the fork oil when we go to put it back in. Otherwise, I could just dump it in. If you really don't care about being super accurate, um, there's, a, there's a nut in here that actually holds the rod and everything that inside here. You just remove that and the whole thing will come out. But if you don't, if you do that before you drain it, then oil will fly out the bottom of that. So a lot of times what you can do is you can just put a 19 mil right in here in between the spring, spin the top cap and the cap will come off. Sometimes it becomes a pain in the ass. So that's where your spring compressor comes in and you put that on your spring, you compress the spring down with weight and you have a friend jam the 19 mil wrench in between the spring and the nut here and then you can torque it off that way. Uh, let's see if we have a whole lot of luck 
uh, and getting this off without the use of someone else. So you can see I got my 19 mil uh, wrench right there on the, the nut. And now we're gonna grab our 30 mil and attempt to ratchet it off. So we are back. I did get lucky. And the, um, this broke, the seal broke for me. So now that it's loose, I could just spin this off. Get that out of the way. There we go. So the cap nut comes off. We have a spacer. And then there's a washer on bottom here. And then what we can do is we remove the spring and the bump stop. And then what you would do, at this point you grab your ratio right and you dump the old oil in. I forgot there's a pin in there, but I'll get that out in a second. Dump, 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 dump. And like I said, I already have most of the oil out. This is the center rod. And then wherever this comes out to, now again, this was a leaky one, so I didn't have all the fluid in here. But if you were just replacing them um, for servicing purposes, the, um, the fluid would come up somewhere, I've already marked it uh, here. The fluid would come up to about this mark, and you would mark it with your marker, and then say, great, I need to, when I go to put it back in, I'd clean all the old stuff out. I'd fill this ratio right up with fresh fluid to that marker, and I'd put it back in. But this one was leaking, and I've, like I said, I've already drained most of it out. So that's why we only see that tad bit left in there. So now we are ready to remove the rod in the center. So we have our center rod, but we need to re remove the entire holder that's in there. So we grab our 7 mil Allen and ratchet. And right on the bottom here, there's our Allen nut. Now again, if you haven't drained all the oil, when you remove this nut, oil will come flying out. <laughs> okay, so we move the, excuse me, bolt, not nut. And now the entire rod assembly can come out and we can set that aside. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to grab our flathead screwdrivers. There's the other one, here it is. So I have a really tiny one, and a, I guess I'd call it a normal size one. And we wanna remove the dust cover. So there's a, a seal, it's called a dust cover right around the bottom here. And what we wanna do is pry in between the metal uh, outside sheathing and that rubber and try to lift it out without gouging anything which is why I have a small one here. So this, you just want to go slow, take your time. And now that I have some space, I can work this one in there and out. And then bam, the dust, dust cover is off. We'll set these aside. So now inside here, and that's going to be hard to show you with the camera. Inside here, there is, ah, come on. Inside here, there is a retaining clip. And it's the, probably the one tool I forgot to mention. You can use something like this, a little pick, maybe even a screwdriver to get it out. So we want to remove that clip. So we just find a good area, lift it up and out. And off comes that little retaining clip. Set that aside. Now the process of removing the fork seals and bearing that's in there is just we want to take the fork and just bang it apart a few times. Not super hard, but just sort of work it out and then the, the seal as well as you know, the bearing and so forth spacers will come out. So we'll just grab it like this and go off it comes. So now we're done with this, we can set this aside. And here we have, we have our seal here. We have a metal spacer, um, our collar, and then a collar here. This is also where it comes in help, help, comes in very handy to have a towel because this stuff is all covered in oil. 
we just wipe all this stuff off. Now there are two things before you remove either one of these seals, the dust cover, your seal, um, your spacer, um, any of this, you want to make note of the order of things. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove, you can't see it, we're going to remove this collar up here. We're just going to do that with, with my pick, uh, excuse me, my screwdriver. I'm just going to expand this. There we go. Slide that off, set it aside. Now we can slide off all of the seals, collars, spacers, and everything, but you want to make note of the order and the orientation of your oil seal. Um, if you, you don't want to put it on upside down or, you know, upside down, I guess you can't. You see the upside down of the correct side. So you want to make note of the orientation of your fork seal. Make note of the orientation of your dust cover. So now all we have to do is we need to clean this up because it's an absolute mess. And we're going to do that with some brake fluid, or brake clean, excuse me. And just a towel. That over there. Try to clean this up pretty really good. Wear eye protection if you're that kind of person. You don't want any break clean in your eyes. Clean up the stanchions. Now while we're in here, you also want to look for gouges or imperfections anywhere here along the rod. Because the tiniest scratch or gouge in this could cause a leak for your oil seal. So it doesn't make any difference whether your oil seal is, is brand new or old. If you have a, if, you, if this is gouged anywhere along in here, then um, that's probably where your oil leak is coming from. And um, as far as I know, there's no repair for that. So you'll have to probably buy an entire new fork. If these were Olin's, you could just replace just this, just by, you know, take the stanchion off and contact Olin's and just replace the inner tube. All right, so we're nice and cleaned up there. So now we want to grab our fork seal kit and dust cover. So again, set that aside. It comes with both. So we have our dust cover and we have our seal. We're going to slide our, our dust cover on first. Now this is where the bullet comes in handy, but my bullet doesn't fit. So this doesn't doesn't fit. It needs to be a 50 millimeter. This is 49 and, and it's hard plastic so and it won't stretch. So this is where duct tape comes in. And we do this because it's up here it's not super, um, this edge isn't super sharp, but if you just sort of try to force this over here without any uh, protection for your rubber seal, then you could damage this. And that will just defeat the purpose of what we're trying to do. So, uh, so I'm going to Give it just a little bit of lube here with some old oil. I'm grab some duct tape. You could use packing tape too if you want. It all works. And no need to go crazy with this. Again, it's just to protect the seal. Put this, slide this on over there. Okay, there we go. Now we're going to check the orientation because our old seal came off of this way. And there's a shallow side. You can't really see it in the camera. And then there's a deeper side. And the deeper side is where your tool goes in, your uh, seal driver. So we want to make sure that we uh, send it with the shallow side down. So for this one, it's this orientation. So this would be upside down. This would be right side up. Again, I'm going to grab a little bit of oil, not a whole lot. Grease the inside. <clears throat> and 
we're going to slide this on. Okay, so we got our dust cover on, we got our fork seal on. Now we can remove the tape. Remove that tape. We'll clean this up again. We don't want any residue. Okay, so now it's a matter of reinstalling our spacer. And the spacer is kind of looking crappy, so we want to clean him up too. All right. Slide our spacer back over. have our larger collar. Again, clean it up. Okay. And then our last collar. And we want to clean it up as well. And that locks right in the top. Okay, so now we are ready to put this, the inner tube, back into the outer tube and rejoin everything. Let me run this in here. Now we can turn this upside down, sort of fit in our spacer, our collar, and our seal. And this is where we want to grab our seal driver. So this is two pieces. So we just separate it. Slide one half in there. That's a little tricky because you gotta actually hold the inner tube up. And now we just wanna slide this up and down and hammer it down into place. like so. Now we can take our C-clip, bring it down, and put it back into position. And you'll feel it click. So now we grab our, where is my, here it is, screwdriver. We just sort of push this down. And you'll hear it click, click. Now you just sort of raise this up to make sure that it's seated up against it, and then we're, we're good there. So now we need to drive our dust cap in, and a lot of times you could just put this in by hand. Sometimes they get a little finicky. So you can also use the driver as well to put our dust cover back into position. like so. All right, so now we are ready to reinstall our inner tube and inner component assembly in place. So we want to slide this back in. Put the spring back in here. Apply a little bit of force. There we go. All right, so that's in there nice and snug. So now we are ready to refill with oil. So the manual says that that cartridge, not with the spring, and this rod, which goes in the center of that inner cartridge, goes in there. And what we do is we fill this with seven and a half weight um, fluid of, I believe it's 720 cc's. Now, um, I know for a fact that these are stock springs and I'm 210 pounds. So I know that it's not sprung from my weight. So I went with a heavier weight oil, uh, the Bel Ray 10 weight. 
I want the Belray 10 weight oil. Normally I would use Motul, but I don't have any more Motul and uh, my local store doesn't carry it and it'll take a while to get here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill my ratio right with 720 cc's of 10 weight Bell Ray. We'll pour it in and then I'll show you how to adjust it. All right guys, so I have my fork, I have my ratio right, I have my measure, and I have my fork oil. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ratio right and over here we have cc's and this can hold 500 cc so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it to 500 pour it in and then fill this to 220 and there's 250 there so 220 would be right in that area there and then we'll pour that in and then we're going to measure this thing now it also uh, the manual also says that 720 cc's is approximate what you want is an air gap of about 70 millimeters from the top down here. So I've already set, I've already set my measure uh, to the appropriate length. So basically what we do is we, after we fill this with fluid, we sit this right on top like this. And then all I do is suction out whatever I don't want. And once it stops sucking out fluid, then I know I have the proper air gap. All right. Right about there. just operating the inner cartridge right now to get oil inside. Okay, well, right about 720, I'm going to give it just a tiny bit more. We're just about out on this bottle anyway. I'm going to pull the rest in. It's very important that you, you operate the inner cartridge up and down because it actually sucks um, fluid inside the cartridge. And if you don't do that, then there's a good chance that you could set the fork oil too low. Now we simply, again, set this right in here. And operate the syringe. Suck shit out. <laughs> It's really that simple. So the syringe is almost full, so I'm going to go and dump it. And now I'm just going to continue and do some more. All right. So we're done, you heard the bubbling there. So we are right at the level where we need to be, 70 millimeters from the top. I will drop in. And now we are ready to reassemble this puppy. So what I'll do is I'll take it back over to the bench, I'll pull up that rod 
and I'll uh, screw the top back on and then uh, we'll reinstall things so I'll be right back alright everyone we are back over here on my uh, tool chest and I have the cap on and I'm sorry I had to shoot this off film because uh, my wife didn't want to be on camera um, so what I had to do here let me raise this up a little bit so you can see this so what I had to do here to put the cap back on so your rod is in here right and as soon as you pull this rod up if you let it go the rod falls back down surprise surprise right I'm running out of LED lights <laughs> uh, the rod falls back down so what you have to do is you have to compress the rod you have to compress the spring without the rod going down uh, so what I did to, to do that is I used this little stopper here or you can use your 19 millimeter crescent wrench or some kind of crescent wrench and I use this here this is actually is a tool for my uh, tap and die set versus this spring compressor uh, didn't really work out so well uh, because this doesn't have a tube so what I did was and the cap is off you can imagine the cap is off and there's a spacer up here I sat this on top compressed the spring I uh, have my wife grab some needle nose pliers grab the tube from in the middle and then jam this under here like that so I can put the top back on again all kind of hard to envision but she doesn't want to be recorded on camera so sorry about that but anyway the cap is back on so all we need to do is bring this back up twist this on where is my there it is alright fork number one is done Fork number two is also done, all filled already. There we go. Sorry about the lighting. My LED batteries are just about dead. But anyway, all right, so uh, both forks are done. I just need to wipe them down and then we can throw them back on the bike. So I'm gonna charge my LED batteries and then we'll see you back over on the bike and we'll put these on here.
spread the calipers open a bit so that they're easier to install. Okay, we're just going to seat the calipers. I'm not going to screw these all the way in. So now we can start putting the, um, the clip-ons back into place. That's it, so what I'll do next is um, I'll center up the wheel, I'll make sure everything is square and even on the fork legs and that the wheel spins freely, uh, then I'll torque everything all up and put the body panels back on. But I think we can call it a wrap for this episode. Well that is a wrap for this episode guys, where we installed our fork seals and dust covers and my 2010 MV Agusta F4 1000. Be on the lookout for the other F4 Rec Bike, the Rec Bike Rebuild. It is close to coming back, I promise, I promise, I promise. It has been with my painter for nearly nine months now, and I promise it's coming back. I have other parts over there that I want to install, and I need to get that bike finished in the next couple of weeks so I can take it back east with me uh, to visit my brother, my annual sabbatical back east uh, to New England. This time, I'm going to be spending all summer there, three whole months there. We're going to do some riding, we're going to do some track days. I'll probably fiddle around on some stuff. Uh, I don't know how much I'm going to record, but uh, it should be a lot of fun, and hopefully uh, if you guys are in the neighborhood, you can come and ride and hang out with us at a little bike night and a couple of other things. We might do a Winnipesaukee run, I'm sure. Uh, we're going to do a couple of track days. But uh, I am Derek. This is Euro Superbike Life, ESBK Life for short. Uh, you guys know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe, or smash it if you didn't. Um, if uh, I didn't explain something completely or right or whatever, guys, leave me a comment. Leave me a comment, good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, I appreciate all of them. Uh, it makes my videos better. Uh, but hopefully, hopefully you guys found this video useful. If not, yeah, I'm sorry, let me know. But anyway, take care guys.